Dr. Ralph, kind of moving on and thinking about opioid-induced constipation, and we've talked about this before, and there are a lot of patients um, in, that are suffering from chronic pain and really need pain medications to be able to kind of, you know, continue to, to live effectively and functionally. Um, but, you know, they do have side effects, and that can be a big problem for our patients. Um, what, um, I know I'm not sure there are a lot of new medications for opioid-induced constipation, but I do think it's important for patients to discuss their bowel health and bowel habits with um, their doctors, whoever's prescribing the medications. Um, do you have any strategies or tips that you use for patients that have opioid-induced constipation? So I think uh, I'd like to take a little step back uh, in this in this regard, Janet. I think the first thing that I look at every patient with constipation, irrespective uh, of what, what uh, symptom constellation they have, is look at their drug list. And I think, you know, if all providers can really, if anyone is listening to this, can really make that a compulsory habit, I think we will help many of our patients. At the same token, I have a message for all patients, if any, who are listening to this. Please be um, upfront and frank to your providers about any medications you are taking, particularly opioids. I mean, opioids is very well known to cause constipation, but unfortunately not all patients know. But if providers are also not familiar with the list of medications that the patient is taking, and you really talk about constipation and the bowel symptoms, da, 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 and then you're ordering tests, then you missed a very important component. And even though I am a stickler for this, even then I miss it occasionally. I do have a patient here and there with some of completely missed it. So I think I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, first and foremost, recognition of this problem is very critical. Secondly, though, you know, there are, I would say two kinds of patient population. There are some who really simply cannot come off opioids. There is no way. I mean, these poor people will not be able to function. They will be completely bedridden and homebound. And that's no way to live. So the only way they're able to function somewhat in society is with the help of pain relieving medications. So we as physicians, we have to make a clear distinction who is that kind of an individual and who are the other kind of individuals who probably somehow were given opioids for some condition, that condition may not even exist anymore, but then thereafter, they are on opioids for umpteen other reasons. So though that second group, we can wean them off or take them off or find alternatives, that would be very helpful. The first group, I think they have to live with opioids. We have to do our part in helping them to cope with their bowel problems. So I think it is important to make that distinction right at the outset. First, getting to know that they are on getting a list of all the drugs and then making this distinction. Now, uh, with regards to medications, you know, again, this is new in the last decade, I would say, is where there has been significant interest. And now, by the way, we as a nation, 25% of opioids prescribed in the world are in America, one country. I mean, wow. just think about it. Yeah. It's incredible amount of uh, of opioid use and unfortunately um, the side effects from it. But you know, the 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 silver lining in the horizon has been the development of these drugs called PAMORAS or peripherally <laughs> acting mu opioid receptor uh, antagonist. So the nice thing about these drugs is they kind of neutralize the effect of opioids on gut receptors. So the opioid receptors are throughout the body, the brain, the gut, everywhere else. But they, I mean, they, someone is taking it for back pain or for cancer issues or whatever. Unfortunately, it is helping their back pain or the cancer, but it's taking a toll on the gut. Mm -hmm. So if we can reverse this toll on the gut and block the effects on the gut, then it can reverse constipation. So that is the principle behind the PAMORAS. And there are several of these available, you know, methyl naltrexone, naldamidine. Uh, we have about three, four of those compounds that are available. Uh, and they're quite good. I mean, they're quite effective. Um, you sometimes can give it an acute situation in the hospital or you can give them uh, in, the, in, the, in the clinic setting and so on. And, and they, together sometimes with laxatives, 
is, is the way we've been able to help. You know, we had very little options for a dollar of this patient until very recently. Mm -hmm. So I'm pleased that, you know, uh, we have some nice options to help these people now. Yeah, working just really on good communication with patients and doctors and a team in general, so that if you are having trouble, the, there's an option for you. It sounds like there are several options for opioid-induced constipation, really thinking about, do you really need these opioid medications? If you do, we can. Um, it's really helpful to work with your team and kind of let your doctors know about your symptoms so that you can kind of pursue some of these uh, medical options to treat your constipation.